Hi, welcome back to my garden. I wasn't really planning to film today, but the lighting was so pretty on the vegetable beds that I thought I'd show you what's growing right now in the garden. So these are the vegetable beds that we built last year. We singed them as a way to preserve the wood without having to use, I don't know, any treatment or anything. Um, and I think one of the advantages is that this time of year where the sun's quite low in the sky, they heat up faster than what the ground would around them. So the things that are like alive in them seem to be doing, I don't know, they seem to be growing a little faster than I would have expected with the temperature range and low light that we've had because it's been raining for like days and days. <laughs> so in the first vegetable bed, uh, we have a few different veggies that I sowed in the fall. I think it was around October time. These ones are cauliflower and they haven't grown too much since I put them in. I was actually surprised that they survived all winter, but they did. <laughs> and I have a feeling that, uh, or at least hopefully that they're growing underground. So uh, as soon as it warms up a little bit, I think that they'll start to grow above ground too. <laughs> um, okay, and over here is some very sad looking spinach. The spinach was the one that I feel like didn't survive the winter the most. <laughs> like, I don't know if this is capable of recovering. It looks like a little funny, but I'm just gonna leave it and see what happens. Um, the broccoli, like the cauliflower, did really well. So, uh, or at least like is alive, which I consider, you know, doing really well. And I think, again, like the cauliflower, it will kind of perk up once it warms up. And then this one here, I was like, not expecting these to survive at all. This is arugula um, that I sowed in the fall as well. And there's, I'm not sure, three or four little plants. And again, they just kind of stayed small. <laughs> so it'll be really exciting if they actually start to grow as soon as it warms up. I'm also doing some kind of winter sowing, some arugula in the cold frame. So we'll see which one does better and I'll know for next year. And bed number two is where we had our three sisters last year. And I think this year we're gonna do tomatoes here. I'm kind of working on a trellis for them. But as a winter crop, we sowed broad beans, which I'm hoping we'll be able to harvest kind of end of May, and then the tomatoes can go in beginning of June. I'll try to get out of the shot, but you can see that they've actually started to sprout, which I really wasn't expecting. I actually thought that maybe they had like just rotted away because we had had a pretty warm fall. And then we, so I was like, okay, I'm just gonna sow these. <laughs> But then it immediately got cold after, and then it got like really wet as well. But it seems like they're all surviving. There's also the odd weed in here. Um, but yeah, anyway, so many of them are poking up. And even here, I can see where the dogs have run through the bed. Um, I don't see any poking up there, but we'll see. Anyway, so these ones are like a, I think they form like a little like bush. You plant them kind of close together and they help hold each other up. And yeah, hopefully we can harvest those kind of in time that then we can plant the tomatoes in after. And then in bed number three, um, there are some beets. I see the top of one here. I'm not sure, like it feels pretty firm. <laughs> I'm not sure what's happening with that. I'm kind of just like waiting to see. I'm not sure if they like overwinter well or if I should have done something different so we'll find out these are the carrots that I also started pretty late um, and my hope is that like we pulled one up just to check and it seemed fine it was just kind of small so I thought maybe if we give them early spring um, to grow a little bit and then we can harvest and even if it's just for like a salad or two that would be pretty fun and then this is the garlic you can kind of see the grid shape <laughs> And we did these, I think, around the same time as the broad beans, maybe a little earlier. So it was kind of late, but um, the ground was still like soft and workable. So I kind of treated them like I would like flowering bulbs and just like went for it. And then in with the garlic, we have these two leftover kale stems 
These ones had gotten really tall and they were flopping, so I ended up decapitating them. Anyway, they never grew back. Kale is pretty perennial in our area, and I noticed that this like new growth here, I'll try to get it to focus, but it looks like the growth here um, is kind of alive. So anyway, we'll see. <laughs> but um, if not, I have started some from seed too. So um, these will either be replaced or kind of left maybe as a very early crop and then I'll dig them up. Bed number four is our asparagus bed. Last year it was our asparagus and cosmos bed. Um, this year it's going to be asparagus and strawberries. So we planted three strawberry bunches kind of near the end of the year, but I can see that they're like spreading out a little bit already. So I guess the theory is that asparagus and strawberries occupy different layers in the soil so they don't end up competing. Like the asparagus is about a foot deep and the strawberries only go maybe six inches, something like that. I'm not exactly sure. And I think also seasonally, if you're growing the strawberries that, um, that flower in June, I think, I don't know, maybe they don't get shaded out or something. Anyway, <laughs> we'll see how it goes. I'm just excited for some strawberries. Um, and asparagus, this will be the second year, so we probably shouldn't harvest any. If there's a particularly kind of full little like bunch shooting up, then we might just take one just to try it um, kind of flavor wise. But otherwise we should wait till next year before we start. And then the last bed um, has a bunch of raspberries. We actually put two different kinds, which was maybe silly. They were the same type, so they both are ever bearing, uh, which I read was like important because otherwise it's really hard to know what to prune. So they're the same like type, but um, two different varieties. So they'll kind of just like intermingle. I don't think we'll ever really know which one we're getting uh, because some of the shoots, like just in one season, some of these shoots that came up from this original plant um, are like all the way out here. So it won't be long before they crisscross each other. Anyway, so we cut these ones back already. These ones are ever bearing so they can bloom on new wood. And that would kind of be our preference because we have a different bunch, which are the June bearing ones. Well, that's what the vegetable beds are doing right now. I feel like over the next month, um, things are really gonna start to speed up. All the spring bulbs are starting to grow and bloom and um, even like the roses, I ended up pruning because they looked like they were all getting ready to leaf out. Um, but yeah, excited for all the things to come. And then we have plans to build a couple more beds as well because like this wasn't quite enough last year. <laughs> um, but I have a feeling that no matter how many beds I had, like I'll always find things to fill them with. Well, thanks for coming along for the little vegetable garden tour, and I'll catch you next time. <laughs>